Welcome everyone. My name is Jeremy Fletcher. I'm here to present some information on the updates to FDM 122. Uh, this chapter includes everything you need to know about design exceptions, design variations, and design variation memorandums. Uh, a lot of the controlling criteria for AASHTO is included in this chapter as well as how to document and review uh, crashes on design projects and construction projects. One of the first updates we're going to make is or we made this year was a reference we put into the general portion of the chapter for some information on triple R projects. There's some special information on design variations and exceptions and requirements that, that need to be met when you do work on uh, triple R projects, and those are included in FDM chapter 114, section 1.1. One of the, the next updates for section 122.2.2 is for design variations. Uh, a lot of this was included in a previous bulletin that went out earlier this year. Uh, one of the big things that we changed was to require that formal design variations are only required on controlling design elements, uh, ADA requirements, and design elements requiring signature by individuals or offices in FDM 122.7.4. That section includes the special requirements like chief engineers, planners, uh, state road design engineer, structural engineer, etc. Uh, that have special uh, approvals for certain types of elements. This update here is also came from the bulletin section 122.2.2 is the project design variation memorandum It's used to document all non controlling design elements for projects that do not meet design department criteria and not included in the previous list for formal design variations. The idea of this standalone document is that it's supposed to capture all the variations on a project. You want to go through the project early in the design process and write down those and, and record those things that you, you feel like shouldn't be part of the final design, but don't necessarily meet department criteria. In those cases, you'll prepare this multi-page document in many cases that will list each item, and it's ideally to include a paragraph or so that includes some of the items we'll discuss here shortly. One of the, the notes on these design variation memorandums, when there's a checkbox on the, on the form 122B that when the district design engineer or another person in the chain of approval uh, requests more information, uh, a project design variation, a formal design variation is required for the resubmittal of those particular elements, so they wouldn't be included in the memo in any resubmittals. That enables the district design engineer to approve all of the elements uh, that were included in the memo with the exception of that one particular element. And one, one note on updating the design variation memorandum, if there are other elements that pop up throughout the process that that the designer wants to include as part of the memorandum, it can be appended to their previous design variation memorandum for approval of those additional elements, or an alternative would be to submit design variation in an additional project memorandum. Another little update, this is kind of always been in the, the FDM at some point or another, but we're, we're, we're asking that designers get these approved prior to the phase two submittal. In previous years, we said early in the design process, but we would like these submitted and approved by the department prior to phase two. Phase two plans include a lot of cross-sectional information, a lot of details and things like that, and quantities are starting to get calculated. So to avoid any kind of duplication of efforts, we would like these approved early in the design process. As many of you have probably heard, target speed is a new element that we are requiring to be evaluated on all projects, uh, particularly um, urban projects, but we want to know what the target speed is for the project. And if you have any elements in for all design variations and all design exceptions, target speed should be included within the report. Here's the items. Uh, these were included in the previous bulletin, but a project design variation memorandum should include the following things. Uh, form F122B, the submittal approval memo. We want to know what the design criteria is versus the proposed. Uh, there should be a review of crash history on the project related to the design element, typically five years from the current date, and an abbreviated, abbreviated justification for the proposed criteria. Uh, to these, this does not have to be an exhaustive discussion. 
uh, typically a paragraph should be able to include these four items. Um, and as was in previous years for lateral offset design variations, include the table of stations for, for the above ground fixed objects that don't meet clear zone or lateral offset. A uh, minor update that we made was to include uh, the updated policy on design standards for the interstate system. The AASHTO controlling elements um, are included obviously in the AASHTO policy of geometric design for highways and streets and the 2011 Green Book is the current document used by the department. There is a an addendum, basically an additional document that governs the design process for the interstate system. Up until now, the 05 version had been used and Federal Highway has since adopted the 2016 version. So all design projects should be evaluated by the 2016 manual. This 10 or 12 page manual is very small, but it has specific geometric requirements that supersede those within the AASHTO Green Book. Section 122.6 is your crash analysis. Um, as we mentioned before, we would like these by phase two, but we just mentioned here to perform the analysis early in the design process. When you do predictive analyses or historical analyses, um, we, we would like to have these early to make sure that it, that there's flexibility if, if, if there's some feedback that needs to be provided or, or there's concerns about some of the um, design variations or exceptions that are submitted for review. We updated the, um, there have been some changes to, to the crash analysis systems that are going on at the department. Uh, we are working on moving all of the crash information over to the Signal 4 database. Currently, it, ex it exists in both databases. Um, so for any design exceptions and variations, there needs to be an evaluation of crashes within both systems, at least for the next year or so, uh, until everything gets moved over entirely to Signal 4. So. For 2013 to 2018, that five year set, you would want to look at crashes within the FDOT car system. Uh, everything between 2018 and today, you would be looking at crashes within the Signal 4 analytics system. Um, you have to get department approval is required for access to these systems, but if you're working on design projects, uh, it's just a matter of going through the process and getting that approval. Uh, the Signal 4 database, as I mentioned, includes everything up to the current date, and you should use this to supplement the information reported from the CAR system. Um, due to the overlap of some of the crash data, make sure you're vetting those crash numbers to make sure they're not the same and they're not duplicated within the analysis. Um, additionally, we updated the average crash cost to include the turnpike facilities. Um, their numbers are slightly different from those for arterials or interstates or other uh, department roadways. And we updated to include the, the 2014 to 2018 completed crash uh, completed crash forms by the state safety office. Uh, one of the updates we made was to for 2014 to 2018 up until now the completed crashes from the cars database was 2013 to 2017. As such, we've updated the the comprehensive crash costs for fatals, injuries, moderate injuries, minor injuries, and property damage only. These are just minor updates that we update every year, and these numbers should be used for the benefit cost of any design variation or exception or safety analysis that's done on a project. All right, uh, another update that's been added is 122.7.4. Uh, these are the special approvals for the chief engineer. This came out as part of the bulletin as well. All design variations for non-standard use of shoulders, for instance, bus on shoulder projects, part-time shoulder use, hard shoulder running, any variations for those will need to be approved by the chief engineer. Additionally, any design exceptions for paved shoulder width on interstate and turnpike facilities will also require uh, chief engineer approval. This is an effort to try to, to get some consistency statewide on our paved shoulders in the event that we expand or or need to um, include particular roadways for um, emergency shoulder use or things like that. Um, additionally, any design variations to not install a, the roadway, a railroad dynamic envelope would additionally need his approval. 
122.7.4 of the state roadway design engineer approvals, we updated this to remove the authority for the turnpike to approve their own design exceptions. These exceptions will now come to the central office for approval by the state roadway design engineer. And the same applies to the state structures design engineer. Any exceptions for the turnpike uh, on for the turnpike or on turnpike facilities is now going to come to the state structures design engineer. These were delegated previously, but now have been moved to uh, state level approval. Additionally, there was an update to the approval table in the back of FDM 122 to clarify that design exceptions for bridges are the intent for state structures design engineer approval. And these um, these are the only ones that really need to come to central office for approval. With that, that completes our updates for the 2022 FDM. Uh, this is I'm again, I'm Jeremy Fletcher, the Roadway Quality Assurance Administrator, and this is the picture of the Quality Assurance section that um, that oversees the design exceptions, variations, and the Florida Green Book and other programs within central office. And with that said, uh, we thank you for your time. Thank you.